Finishing a 3D print to look like this without any sanding. Is it possible? We'll stick around and find out. All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead. I wanna thank you all for stopping by and checking out today's video, whether you are a regular or you're a newcomer. Appreciate you stopping by the channel, see what's going on. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a method of finishing and smoothing a 3D print without doing any sort of sanding. What? There are some specific components that you do need for this, but it's a really cool method. Uh, I use it on a Metrocop helmet. It is a helmet that I build all the time and I was crunched on time for this particular helmet. I basically had one day to finish it and doing this method, dry time, paint time, everything, knocked it out in a single day, so pretty awesome. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video as I have some additional tips, tricks, comments, and recommendations for using this method, even if you don't have the exact setup that I'm gonna show you here today. Without any further ado, let me show you the model and get into my process smoothing and finishing up this Metro Cop helmet. Let's go. All right, so starting off printing the Metro Cop, I printed it on my Creality K1 Max using my Better Print Profile that you might have seen in the last video. I will leave a link in the description for that Google Drive to get that print profile. But overall, uh, it came out pretty good. I did go ahead and reprint the earpieces and the filters because they were a little bit too small. Uh, overall though, here all the pieces that I printed came out nice and crisp and defined, which is exactly what we wanted. Prepping these pieces, there is no sanding, but I did do a little trick with some clothes pins and what I do is hot glue those uh, onto the inside of the filters and ear pieces just to help me mount them, which will help me spray and handle them when they are drying and curing and things like that. We're gonna be using a slick sand, which is a sprayable body filler primer and we need a special HVO P gun something with a nozzle of two millimeters or higher is going to be better most of your conventional hvlps are going to be somewhere around 1.5 or one here you can see my other guns that i use for painting clear coat and traditional base coat uh, but this stuff here what you want to do is go ahead and get your pieces set up so you can see i have them mounted on my racks this stuff is perfectly okay to spray outdoors you do want to avoid heat and you do want to avoid sunlight so you can see i've got my gun and my mixing cup here uh, with this you do have to add some hardener so what i'm going to do here is throw my PPE on, respirator and gloves, get this stuff nice and mixed up add it into my cup. I do like to reduce it down because it is a little bit thick, so adding some acetone will make this just a little bit thinner, uh, more controllable. It won't cure, flash, and harden quite as quick if the acetone is in there. You want the consistency of something similar to house paint. You don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin. Once you have the right consistency, go ahead and add your hardener. Prior to adding your slick sand to the gun, I like to spray some gun cleaner in there just to make sure you have proper airflow and everything is spraying and flowing nice and even. Once your gun is good to go, you can go ahead and pour the slick sand in and start spraying your pieces. You want to spray them nice and even, rotate them in different positions to make sure you're getting adequate coverage on everything on the pieces that you're spraying. You can see here that it's doing a great job of filling. There's a couple areas where we will have to go ahead and add a second coat. Uh, you can let these sit for about 10 maybe 15 minutes and then you can go ahead and add your second coat don't worry about the slick sand hardening in the gun again we did add that acetone so it does give you about 15 to 20 minutes of play time as long as you keep it out of the heat and out of the sun it is doing a great job of filling after we applied that second coat looking at the other pieces here too again we didn't do any sanding to this and it's filling in a lot of the imperfections here there's a couple areas where the supports kind of did uh beat up the bottom of that so i am going to put a couple more coats on just to fill it in but you can see here just from an initial application just how great this product is filling everything in so once you've applied your secondary coat of slick sand and it's dried and cured, what I like to do is grab some nice filler primer, something that has a better buildability than most. Uh, I'm going to go for my U-Pull Expert Sandable. I love this filler primer. But what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to do uh, a couple coats uh, on the pieces here. Maybe if there's just some light layer lines or something that didn't fully fill in with the slick sand, uh, that maybe it was hard to get with the gun, or like I said, it was just a, a hard to reach inconspicuous area. Do a couple nice coats of that, allow that to build up and dry and then go ahead and inspect it. You can see here after inspecting it, it's crazy to think we haven't done any sanding on this at all. And those layer lines are just absolutely disappearing. The combination of the slick sand and that nice U-Pull sandable primer really has done a great job of filling in a lot of these imperfections. Taking a look at the filters and the ear pieces here, a lot of the imperfections are completely filled in. These pieces are looking great and they are ready for the next stage in this process. 
So since this is kind of a grungier, more beaten up helmet, what I like to do is grab some textured paint. And what this does is it adds a type of texture to the finish. So it makes it look kind of more worn and beat up, but most importantly, it's gonna fill in the layer lines. So you can see here, after doing the application, how it just adds um, just a layer of, I guess, kind of grime and grunge to it. But again, most importantly, it's filling in any additional layer lines. You can apply it heavy, you can apply it light. I guess it just depends on how you want the helmet to look. Uh, you can see here on the front piece, I kind of did it sporadically just to kind of give it a more unique look. After that, I like using a hammered paint on top of that. And what this does is this adds almost like a leather-esque type finish and they make it in multiple different colors. Here, I'm gonna apply it in silver so you can actually see the pattern a little bit better after we spray it. Again, you can apply it heavy, you can apply it light. I'm doing it kind of more sporadic on this. I want that battle damage look. This combination of these paints really does do that. What I like to do after that is do a coat of satin black paint. Now, disclaimer, everything does not need a black base, but I am doing this for weather purposes. So I went ahead and sprayed everything with the satin paint just to kind of smooth it out because the combination of the textured and the hammered paint, it does leave it almost bumpy in a sense. So I like to do a couple coats of the satin just to kind of help smoothen everything out. We want it to look kind of gritty and grimy, but not too gritty and grimy. So by doing the uh, satin coats on there, it does help it. For weathering, we are going to use what's called Peel Tech. This is basically a uh, masking fluid where you apply it on with a brush and then you do some top coats on it. It's going to give it the effect that there's chipped pieces of paint, chunks taken out of it, things like that. Of course, my camera fell over when I was applying the Peel Tech, so I can't show you my application of it, but I can show you the aftermath. Uh, but after the Peel Tech uh, is dried, you can go ahead and add your top coats of, of whatever color you want to add. As far as weathering and damaging this goes, I am going to use some Posca markers to help enhance the look of some of the black chips. I'm also masking off areas on the ear pieces and the filters that I'm going to paint straight black. Big, big tip though, do give yourself enough time. Let those paints dry before you go ahead and mask them. Once everything was masked off, it was time to go ahead and add the black where I needed to. I went ahead and grabbed some tweezers and started removing the peel tech, remove the areas that were masked off, and then inspecting the filter and the ear pieces, everything looks great. I also did the same effect on the front of the mask and the rear of the mask, and you can see here using that peel tech, adding those top coats and just rubbing it off, it really gives it a cool chipped worn effect. I also took the satin black paint and did that misting fan spray on the front just to replicate dirt, grime, and weathering, very similar to how I did on my Wolverine and Deadpool mask that I recently uploaded. Once that was complete, it was time to start assembling. So grabbing my hot glue gun and doing some spot hot gluing to temporarily hold the pieces in place, and then taking my soldering iron and doing a more permanent plastic weld, making sure everything would stay in place firmly and properly. Taking a welding shield and cutting out some eye lenses and hot gluing them in place was the final touch for this helmet. Taking a final look at the helmet here, it really did come out great. And it's crazy to think we didn't do any sanding and this helmet still came out looking absolutely awesome with a one of a kind custom look. Now that you've seen my process and a final look at the Metrocop helmet, let me give you my final thoughts and wrap this up. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There is yet another method I'm showing you uh, smoothing and finishing a 3D print. I think it's a pretty cool method, you know. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, this particular method is not going to apply to every helmet. If you're doing something that needs to be completely sleek and smooth, maybe like, you know, an Iron Man helmet or something like that, this one may not apply, you know, but uh, I know a lot of people are out there and they build a Star Wars helmet, a Jason mask, a Mortal Kombat mask, Halo mask, some of these helmets that are just meant to be more beat up and grungy and just have that worn effect. This really is an efficient method. Uh, and like I said, there are obviously some specific components that you need. You know, if you don't have that set up, I made another video with this Metro Cop helmet using the Raptor 1K. The Raptor 1K is similar to a uh, slick sand or maybe feather fill G2. It's basically a high build primer. Not quite as thick, so you may end up having to do a couple more coats, but still, it's gonna give you the same idea. You know, it's gonna be a higher build. It's not anything like, you know, filler primers or anything like that. So if you can invest in a setup with a compressor, uh, it's really great. It is gonna save you a lot of time and really give you awesome results. So you can see here that the mask, uh, you know, really does look awesome. And, you know, taking a closer look here, you know, you know, obviously a lot of the weathering and some of the effects that I did to it uh, does help fill it in. And, you know, using that texturized paint, maybe you're sitting there looking at it saying, hey, DW, it looks a little bit grainy I don't really like that. You can skip over that part. Um, I did a similar effect to a Moon Knight helmet where I just used the hammered paint. And that kind of gives it almost like a leather-esque look. 
you can go straight to that. I've actually done that process in the past just on the front of the Metro Cop helmet. And it, again, it just makes it look like it's worn and beat up and battle damaged. But the coolest thing that those paints do is they, they fill in the layer line. So it really is a cool method. To be honest, I, I spent more time weathering it than anything, uh, but that was really what I was going for. And I didn't go too in depth on, on how I weathered it. Um, you know, if you're interested in exactly how I did that, you know, drop me a comment. I'm sure I'll have another one of these helmets that I have to make. Uh, I can really do an in-depth video on my whole weathering and battle damage process. But overall, a really great method. It really makes the helmet look awesome. And the greatest thing was we didn't spend a ton of time and a ton of effort getting the helmet to look like that. And another nice thing to touch on this method too, you know, if you've got a side hustle or maybe an Etsy store and the fact that I was able to knock it out in a day really is awesome. You know, obviously there's going to be some startup fees. Invest in a compressor, an HVLP gun. You know, that initial startup cost might be a little bit of a, a kick in the pants, but you got to think long term, you know, and if you can save time, you know, time is money. And this process is definitely going to be something that, you know, saves you time. Um, you can actually do a couple of these while the gun is set up and you got your slick sand or whatever you're using mixed up. You can go ahead and spray a couple helmets and do this method. You know, once you get in a routine and get used to using more professional setups and professional products, it, it just all becomes routine and it's really great. And then you'll really never steer away from it. But again, go ahead and try this method out. And if you like it, drop me some love and let me know. Well, that's a wrap on this video, guys. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have questions on anything, whether it be products, method, technique, or you just want to say what's up, go ahead and drop me a comment. You know, I'll hit you back. And of course, if you do enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, tutorials, comparison videos, test videos, everything I'm doing on the channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I've got a whole list of videos just like this and more that you're not going to want to miss. And once again, taking a final look at the Metro Cop helmet here before I get him packed up and sent out to his new owner. Let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and of course, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Until next time, it's DW out. Later. Sometimes